one contributor shares, I really like everyone I work with, which makes it really hard to give critical feedback. How can I do this without sounding mean? Well, the most basic thing that I would point to is I would ask this person, how are they currently giving feedback to their coworkers? Because I see there's really two primary paths that we can take when giving people feedback about what they've done. The first path is the more conventional path that most of us learned, which is if we're going to give feedback and really be honest with the person and really, really be authentic, we're going to point out to them the wrongness of their ways. We're going to point out what they did wrong, all the ways in which they were inappropriate, inconsiderate, and any other judgment you can pull out of the hat. So that is judgment-oriented feedback or judgment-based honesty. And in most cases, that is not going to be received positively because, go figure, most people do not enjoy being judged, blamed, and criticized because they associate being judged, blamed, and criticized with suffering negative consequences on the other end of that, such as the withdrawal of support or love, or in the case of a workplace, actually putting their job and their security in jeopardy. So giving feedback from a judgment-based way is not likely to engender openness and trust. So the other pathway that we can take is to offer feedback from a needs-based or a needs-oriented perspective. And that would be to you know, refer to what a person has done and focus the heart of the conversation on expressing the needs of mine that are in play in relation to this behavior. And I actually, even in a workplace setting, I de-emphasize my expression of feelings. Uh, I include them to some extent for context. But the heart of the message, I find, is to talk about the needs that I have. So I might talk about a need I have to trust that uh, my voice matters. I may have a need for respect and consideration. I may have a need for um, uh, a sense of ease and flow in our communication, whatever the, need, the case may be. I'm talking about my needs. And then again, I'm making a clear request because it's so incredibly clear. When I put my needs on the table between me and another person, it is critical that very quickly I make a clear request about what I'd like back in relation to sharing my needs. If I fail to make that request, it is highly likely that the other person will get defensive or they'll try to fix it or they'll move into uh, trying to make it better, or uh, they'll become aggressive, or they'll take responsibility for me and try to make me feel better, none of which gets at the heart of the matter. Okay? So very quickly, I'd say um, something like, does this make sense to you, what I'm saying? You know, what, what sense are you making out of the feedback I'm offering? Or I might say, what is it like for you to hear this from me right now? I might say, I know sometimes it's awkward, uh, when we give each other feedback, so I'm wondering how you are right now hearing this from me. And then and only then, I may move to a more action-oriented request or a solution request. I may propose something uh, that the person could do differently that would not only work better for me, but my sense is it would also work for them. Because we are not pursuing our needs singularly or single-mindedly here. If we're giving feedback, with the express purpose of getting the other person to stop their behavior, it is not likely to go well. Even if the person agrees to change, they're not likely to do it out of a true sense of inspiration and shift. So I want to offer to propose something, perhaps, that I uh, suspect would work for both of us and to lead the conversation into that direction of a mutual exploration of how we can work in partnership to support each of our needs. So when I give feedback that way, usually it's received uh, more positively. Now still, sometimes people feel uncomfortable. People often feel awkward, even if I do it in the most self-responsible way possible. And I think this is a factor of uh, the fact that very few people have experience of receiving feedback that is not judgment-based and that there are not negative consequences and punishment. So uh, this approach does not assure 
that the person will be jolly in receiving the feedback. They may not feel happy. They may feel nervous or anxious. However, I find that if you stay on this road of needs-based feedback in a needs-based conversation, progressively the conversation will move forward, both of you will relax, and increasingly you will find yourself in a collaborative space where each of you are searching for a mutually satisfying outcome.